In this presentation, we will generate, analyze, print, and export to Excel month-end reports and financial statements, those including the balance sheet, the income statement, and a transaction detailed report. In other words, we've entered data for the second month of operations. We'll now analyze the balance sheet and the income statement. We'll practice and check our numbers. So if you're following along, you can check the numbers with those. And then we'll take a look at the transaction detailed report, which is a great report to then dive deeper if there's any problems with the numbers that have been checked. So also a great report if you want to use it for billing or taking a look at the amount of work or transactions that have been entered. We will then export these reports and think about how we can organize these reports to be presenting them to others, whether that be supervisors or clients. It's time to rise above the crowd with Sage 50 Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars company file. We're now going to be taking a look at reports, those month end reports. So we're going to go to the reports drop down. We'll go into the financial statement reports first, open up the financial statements. We're going to look at the balance sheet. So we will then open up the balance sheet for the month of February. There is our balance sheet. I'm going to make this large. I'm going to scroll through it uh, slowly so you can take a look at it. If you're following along, you can take a look at the balance sheet thus far. Think about whether or not your numbers tie out. If your numbers do not tie out, then consider changing the dates possibly to a future date to see if any transactions had been entered after this point in time. Uh, and then if they have, then use the zoom feature to drill down on it. Consider how you can basically make any adjustments to any of those transactions if it's a date issue. If it's not, uh, if you can't figure it out, then that's okay. Uh, we'll then take a look at the income statement and the, then the transaction detail report, which is another great tool for, for figuring something out such as that. So this is going to be our balance sheet. Now let's take a look at our income statement. So I'm going to go back to our reports. We're going to go to the income statement. We're going to print all of these out or look at all of them, I should say. I'm going to remove the zeros and then we'll go back into them and think about organizing this information and how we would print it out and present it to others. So here we have it where we have the month information as well as the year to date information, which is quite nice. So once again, you could take a look at it and re review the numbers at this point in time. If anything is off, check your dates and then I will check the transaction detail report. Uh, note that uh, at the end of the month of, uh, the, of the current month, we have the income now 12955 Year to date, the 12th, we have the 7,217. We had a loss in January resulting in a lower year to date number than the uh, February numbers. Now let's take a look at the transaction uh, detail report. We're going to go to the uh, general ledger reports now. We're going to be opening up the, the transaction detail report. Transaction detail report. Let's take a look at the options up top. Opening up the options. I like to look at the actual uh, not the summary, I uncheck the summary. And I want to take a look at the month of February. So let's bring it from February 1st to the February 29th. Because there's 29 days this year in 2020. So there we have that. Include number of transactions, that's fine. Let's go ahead and say OK. So if you had any problems before, this is a great report to take a look at. Again, it's a good report to kind of review your work or review someone else's work because you're not just looking at the end numbers, you're looking at, you know, the amount of transactions that happen. Also, if you want to bill based on transactions and think about those service items that you might want to set up as a bookkeeper or something like that, you could then set up a range and say, hey, look, if you're within this range to that range, this is the service item that we set up based on the number of transactions or possibly even the number of accounts that are affected, however you want to do it. And that can give you a more kind of objective number rather than, than an than a income number based on just hours where people are like, well, were you really working for these amount? Of, you know, it's more arbitrary. So this is a little bit more concrete. You could say, hey, look, there it is, right? There's the billing hours. So on this side, you're gonna have the transaction type, the date and the name and information. So we could see that on down. And if that's not enough detail for you to, to basically understand something, then of course, on the right hand side, you're gonna have more details. So let's scroll down this way and we can see everything that's gonna be entered for the month of February. I'm going to scroll back up top and then take a look at the other side of this report. That's going to be the line description and then the accounts that are going to be affected. So they actually show us the journal entry on this side of things. So here, 
Here's the account. Now, obviously, we only have the account number here, so you'd have to look at the chart of accounts in order to tie that out to see what the accounts are. But you can get an idea of what account it would be with the account number, of course, because it's going to be in order by uh, the account numbers are in order by type of account. So then you might want to check then if you're reviewing this stuff, then you might want to look at the amounts on the right hand side first and then see if there's a problem with it. Then go back in and look at, at more detail. But in any case, We'll scroll down a little bit uh, in this way fairly slowly. We will be providing this information, of course, in the practice file so you can uh, take a look at it and do some comparison with it if you so choose. Now we're going to go ahead and print this stuff out. We're going to be printing it as a PDF using the cute PDF printer to do so. We'll save it as an Excel file and practice the fact that we can then collate it and print it all out at one time going back on over to the balance sheet. And we will make a PDF file with these reports all in one document with the use of Excel and the cute PDF printer. So let's do that now. We can either save this. I'm back to the balance sheet. We could save it as a PDF here. I'm going to practice using the cute PDF printer because I think it's uh, useful to do so. So we're going to go to the cute PDF printer. I'm just going to go ahead and print this item out. It's going to ask me where do we want to put it pretty soon, I hope. That's what it should do. And then I'm going to say I want to put it in uh, the Section 8 in the Sage 50 Cowed Accounting Section 8. And we're going to put it there in Standard Balance Sheet. That looks good. So I'm going to say, all right, there is that one. Then I, I'm not going to go to the, I'm going to do them all first as PDF. And then we'll go back and do the Excel. So then I'm going to go to the Income Statement. That's what I think is the fastest way to do it personally. And then I'm going to go to the income statement. I'm going to go say we're going to print this one as a PDF file as well. It's going to go to the cute PDF printer. I'm going to say, OK, that's what we want. It's going to ask us where we want to put it. And uh, I think it's already going where we want to put it. So I'm just going to say, is it going there? Yeah, income statement. That's fine. I'm going to say OK on that one. And then let's do the third one, which is the transaction detail report. Now, this one might be a little bit tricky because it might not fit on one page as well, which is another reason it could be useful to then export it to Excel. We have a few more options with regards to the formatting of it. But I'll print this as the PDF here. So we're going to say print it as the cute PDF. And there is that. And save it. Now we'll export them to Excel. And then we'll format them from that point. Let's start with the balance sheet again. Start from the first point, balance sheet. I'm going to export it to Excel. We're going to make a new sheet. So it's going to go to a new Excel sheet. So I want to create a new Excel workbook. And then it'll create the worksheet within the workbook, of course. So we'll say OK. Should then uh, make a new Excel workbook and then put the worksheet in it. And there it is. It did exactly what it's supposed to do, which is nice. You could do any kind of formatting once in this spot, which is great too. I usually will check the page layout to make sure that uh, we have the, the name up top in, in the section heading or in the, in the header section. So then I'm going to go back to the this view, the normal view. Then I'm going to save this. I'm going to save it not as the balance sheet, but as the financial statements, because then I'm going to be putting the other kind of reports in the same area. Maybe I should call it reports because I've got one one. The transaction report isn't really a financial statement. So maybe I should call it month in reports or something like that for February. But in any case, it's going into our Sage 50 cow docs and then we're going to go to the section eight and we're going to say this. So uh, here's here's the moment of truth. We'll call it reports. We'll call it month and reports Feb something like that. OK, and then I'm going to say save and then close this out. We'll close this one out and then I'm going to do this do the income statement. Let's go to the income statement now I'm going to export that to Excel, but this time to the existing Excel worksheet that we just set up. So I'm going to say I want to go to the existing workbook and then I'm going to find it because it's not going to the right one. I don't think right now because that's section seven. So we'll go back to Sage 50 Cowd, and then we'll go to section eight and we want to go to that one. That's the one we want. So then I'm going to say, OK, it should then open up that report that uh, we had. We put a new worksheet on it and the, the new data in it in that new worksheet. And there it is. It like totally did just that. So we have it. And if I go then to the second tab and uh, there's our header, that looks pretty good. Back to the first tab. I'm, I'm going into the views over here. Normal view versus the page layout view. Now we could format this. I could like delete these if I don't want these numbers possibly. If I didn't want the year to date or something like that, you could do some uh, quick formatting here. If we wanted to remove the pennies, possibly uh, you could do some quick formatting in that in that case. I'm going to keep this for now. I'm going to save this again 
We'll do some formatting in the next report. I'm going to save it. I'm going to close it and save it. You should probably save it and then close it, but I'm going to close it and save it. So I'm living on the edge. And then we're going to go to the uh, transaction detail report. And then we're going to do the same thing. I'm going, to, I'm going to export this to Excel once again. It's going to go to that existing workbook. So we're going to say OK. And there we have this one. Now this one needs some work. If I go back to the to the second view over here, the page layout view, it doesn't fit on a page wide, and that that is something that's just not acceptable. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do something about that. So what are we gonna do? We we could first I would check the layout, which Sage is pretty good at changing the layout when this happens. So if you go to the page layout and you go to the orientation, it's in landscape, so that's all you can do there. Then we want to maximize the the size of the column. So what we're going to do is I'm going to highlight, I'm going to select from column B and go all the way out to column L, let go. And then I'm going to put my cursor anywhere in between these columns. So it looks like that, not like that, but like that, not like that, but like that. And then double click there, double click there. And that will uh, make the columns as large as possible without uh, removing anything. And then we're still not quite there yet. Now notice that there's a couple of columns I might not need. This job ID column not doing much for me here. So I might say, why don't I just remove this one? I totally don't need that. I'm just going to, I'm not going to remove it. I'm going to hide it. So I'm going to hide it. So it's still there in case someone needs it, but I don't think anybody needs it, but I'm kind of too scared to delete it. Now this one, no, I've got some names over here, but maybe I don't need the whole name. Maybe I can, maybe I can uh, make this go down a bit more so that I just have the ID, something like that. So you could do something like that might be, might be uh, useful. You could do the same thing for the name over here. And again, you could hide another column if you so choose. So maybe this name column, I could say, let me just bring this down just enough till it fits on a page and see if that if that's uh, something that's not acceptable. Given that if I look at the data, it looks like that's that'll be OK. It looks like that's OK. So then if we I'm going to keep it at that and let's check and see if we can print these three reports then out on one page. So I'm going to save it first not on one page, but on one <laughs> PDF file. So let's go to the file tab. We're going to go to the print option. Now, if we wanted to print this, now we can, we don't have to like do any fancy collating. If we sent it to the printer, uh, we can just say, I want to print the entire workbook. That's kind of the trick, not the sheet, the entire workbook. And then it should be pre collated. Here's the balance sheet. Here's the uh, income statement. Here's the transaction report, and this is the tricky one. Does it all fit on? It looks good. That one looks good. And we can export it to Excel if we have the, I mean, to a PDF if we have the cute PDF printer putting them all on one page. So let's do that now. Let's print it, and then it's going to use that cute PDF printer to put it all in one PDF file, which is fancy. So there's the month end reports. Let's go ahead and say save on that. Then I'm going to close this back out. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to minimize this, minimize this, minimize this, close that. And then I want to get into my Sage 50 Cloud, Cloud folder. So we're going to go into the Sage 50 Cloud section eight. And then once again, we can give this reports to somebody else one by one with like a lot of attachments, but that's kind of a lot of attachments. We could put them into a folder, for example, calling that folder the month and reports for feb february and then we could put this information in there so i could put like the balance sheet in there i could put the income statement in there and then we might want to put this transaction detail report in there this other thing was like checks we printed so i don't think i want to put that in there and then and then i could zip that of course we could right click on that and zip that folder so I can right click and then compress the folder. It's not wanting to, to do anything with the right click right now, which is a little annoying. Let's try it again. If I right click, there it is. So then if we send it to, we can compress it and that allows us to attach it to a, uh, a email or something like that. Then of course we have it in Excel where we can print it from and that'll make it collate easily. And we have it in the PDF file so we can have basically one attachment with all those pages in the one attachment. So here we have the uh, assets, the income statement, or the balance sheet, which includes assets, income statement, and then the transaction detail report at the bottom. So that's gonna be it for now. Let's get out of here.